devilishly indulgent dessert. Nothing beats a great cake, a sort of a show-off trophy for party food. So I'm going to make the most amazing flourless chocolate cake, but with a twist. First thing first, make the caramel. Flatten the sugar. Never stir a caramel, rule number one. Now keep the pan nice and flat. I'm going to flavour this caramel with a little bit of mint. Give it a little chop. Sprinkle that into the caramel. Don't get the caramel too dark, just nice and light. A little teaspoon of oil onto the tray and rub that in. And then pour out your caramel. If I was making a caramel sauce, then I'd put butter and cream into the caramel. But I want this nice minted brittle running through my cake. Whilst the caramel cools down on the tray, I'm going to make my cake. First, melt good quality dark chocolate in a bain-marie. Heating it directly in the pan would destroy the cocoa fats. Always in a bowl over boiling water. In a mixing bowl, sugar, two whole eggs and three egg yolks. Whisk until beautifully light and creamy and the colour changes to a light yellow. The more you mix the eggs and the sugar, the lighter that texture in the centre of the chocolate cake. Next, melt some butter into your warm dark chocolate and stir. Puts that really nice sheen, velvety, rich and tasting amazing. Add that to your sugar and your eggs. Mm. Now give that a really good mix. And when you're making flourless desserts, it really is important to work hard at incorporating air, especially with the yolks and the sugar. That natural height needs to take place at the beginning. Look at that. Looks like the perfect chocolate ganache. Then separate four egg whites into a bowl. Now, make sure you've got two thirds of the way there with your whites and then just sprinkle in your sugar. It's almost like a meringue. And the firmer you make these now, the more it will elevate your cake in the oven. That's what you call a stiff peak. In with the whites. Before I start mixing that, I'm gonna get my caramel. Just start breaking that up. It's like little glass, sheets of glass, beautiful. Save some of your minty caramel shards for decoration and use a rolling pin to break up the rest into small pieces. Sprinkle that in. So as we start to slice that chocolate cake, you'll come across that nice crunch. Take your cake tin. Make sure it's lined with the greaseproof paper on the bottom, nicely greased. Pour this in. Mm. A few sharp taps on a hard surface will rid your cake mixture of any air pockets that could create holes in your cake. Sit that in the oven, 180. After 35 minutes, my chocolate mint cake is cooked, and whilst it cools down, I can whip up a peppermint cream topping. Add sifted icing sugar and a few drops of peppermint extract to double cream, and whisk until it's just holding its shape. Spoon your minty cream on top of the cake, leaving a small border free to make it easier to cut. For a cake that can't fail to attract attention at your party, scatter over the remaining caramel mint shards. Start with the cookie dough. Simply combine muscovado sugar, peanut butter, and butter into light and fluffy. Then add your egg, a splash of milk, vanilla seeds, and beat again until smooth. Sift together salt, baking powder, and flour. Then mix until thoroughly combined. In floured hands, roll the cookie dough into golf ball sizes. Flatten and create an indent with your finger. Fill with half jam and half peanut butter. Place the cookies on a tray lined with baking paper and bake in a preheated oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Cool before serving. Next, a refreshingly light dessert of lemon and basil granita. Start by putting the juice of seven lemons and the zest of one into a small pan with a sprinkling of caster sugar. 
stir over medium heat until the sugar dissolves. Dilute your granita mix with a little water. Pour into a freezer-proof container, stir in a good handful of chopped fresh basil and place covered in the freezer for three hours. When the granita is frozen around the edges, lightly break up the mixture with a fork. Return to the freezer and repeat twice until the granita is frozen with a granular texture. Spoon into chilled serving glasses. Garnish each with a sprig of basil. Amazingly light and refreshing lemon and basil granita. What we need to do first is to get these peeled and sliced. I get my pan on to get nice and hot. Now, let me give you a little taste of that. Sour, huh? <laughs> Isn't it? Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Whoa! So well. Nearly blew my head off. So, they're incredibly acidic. Okay, and you need to cook them. Those wonderful red apples you've got are called Brayburns. What other apples do you know? Green ones. What are they called? Um, I'm not too sure what the green ones. Another are. Another word for your nan. Grandma's? No. Red. No. Pink lady apples. No. Granny Smith. Granny Smith apples. That's right. What we're going to do is cook the cooking apples and the eating apples together. I love the combination of the tartness from the Bramley cooking apple with the sweetness of the Brayburn. Get the pan nice and hot and sprinkle the bottom of the pan with caster sugar. Three or four nice slices of fresh ginger and three little cinnamon sticks. I want you to remember that because we're going to look for them. OK? Because once we've used them and they've worked their magic, I need to pull them out. See all the sugar dissolving? Definitely. Now, we just let that go a little bit darker. OK? And then we we'll place it's our apples quick. in. very quick. Doesn't it? Give that a nice little toss. OK? A nice golden colour. Cinnamon in, ginger in. So we're cooking down the apples. Butter in. Gently cook until the apples soften, then take off the heat. And we go into there. What's that coming out, Dad? So that is a little bit of the puree. I'll show you we'll do that in a minute. How many ginger? Four. Four ginger. And three cinnamon. Three cinnamon. Out with the cinnamon. I've got and the ginger. two gingers. And we take a spoon of apples. It smells mm. so nice. How nice does that look? See the colour of the apples? Mm. Let's put these in the fridge to get nice and cold. That's the compote sorted. Easy. Now a simple creamy whip to crown the top. Do you separate the egg whites into there for Daddy? Right, egg whites are in. Egg whites you are in. You want to separate? Off you go, Daddy. And I'll sprinkle the sugar in, and then you turn up the speed. Good girl. Good job, please. Now let's see if you've got a really nice stiff peak. So you lift them up. Now that is what I call a nice stiff peak. Well done. Not bad, not bad. Next, in a separate bowl, whip double cream until stiff. Nice and slowly. So cream whips so much quicker. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That by hand, Dad. We're going to put some delicious lemon zest, which will make the cream so much better. Then sweeten it up with leftover caramelly compote puree. And you mix that in nice and carefully. So it's like this apple mm. butterscotch. Now, to make the cream even lighter, fold in those whisked egg whites and sugar. Egg whites into the cream. Just nicely fold that in. So you bring your glasses back out. Manage the glasses? Yep. Good girl. Mmm, silly. We're on for a treat. Open up the piping bag. Now, 
twist the end. Now you could spoon this in, but I want to just give a nice little lift. It also gives it a nice pattern. Lemon on top. Back in the fridge. Mm. You and I, chef, I'm going to prep the pears. So if you peel, I'll top and tail into quarters. Pears go soft in the oven very, very quickly. So if we're going to put them on a tart, we'll need to leave them whole, half or in quarter. What's that in there? Ginger. Mm, that's right. That's stem ginger. So we're going to use stem ginger and fresh ginger. Next, add your stem ginger, a little of the stem ginger syrup. Good girl. And some brown sugar to your quartered pears. And then just grate some fresh ginger. Off you go. So it's a bit of a um, different one to grate this because it doesn't really come through like the cheese. No. I'm going to make that a little bit zesty. And now we've got some lemon zest. Some lemon zest in there. Right, what we need to do now is give that a nice little mix. Now, this is a sweet pastry. You can buy this stuff. We can make it. It's so easy to do. So give me your finger. That's my centre point. I want you to get the pears going round like that in a really nice circle. It's difficult, isn't it? Because the pears keep on sliding all over the place. Yeah. We've got egg wash on the outside, and I'm going to show you a little trick. So you lift that up. So is the egg wash acting like a bit of a glue? That's right. Crimple this with our finger, and the pastry forms this nice little shelf, like a little money bag. Are you going to do anything with the spare pears? Oh, yeah. You start building that up, then, you see? We've got the fresh ginger, and those nice little bits of stem ginger. Let me go around my egg. With your glue. With my glue, just on top. Tilly's last job is to give our tart a good dusting of icing sugar. So that caramelises it and colours the pears beautifully. It's a bit right. like snow. Isn't it? Now that glazes the pastry, so the pastry has this really nice shine on there as well. Finally, the lemon on top. And then put that there. 180, and in she goes. Our pear tart has had 35 minutes in the oven. Look at that, baby. That looks good. Mmm. Mmm. Would you like me to start dusting? Yes, please. Nice and gently all the way around. Good girl. Little taps. The others are going to love this. It looks a bit like a snowy cake. Doesn't it? Good job. Now, very carefully carry that to the table. How nice does that look? Delicious.